Well, there's been a lot going on regarding Syria, which seems to be hmm, a favorite topic of mine to ponder. But I think it is quite important, and there's uh, so much in the way of analysis that in the end result, you could never really... Uh, figure out what's going on. There's competing narratives. On the one hand you have, uh, well actually there's probably several hands in the end result, but uh, we can look at it at least in two different ways. So on the one hand you have the people that say, and this is um, my interpretation of what they're saying, so it's rather rough, maybe not exact, and I don't want to put words in other people's mouths. But uh, they basically the best of my understanding is that uh, within the United States itself, there's different, uh, we'll say, agencies or groups competing that have different ideas about what's supposed to happen in Syria. And uh, very recently, the argument goes, uh, at least the White House, which probably would mean Kerry at the State Department, but I'm not entirely clear on that. Kerry seems to go uh, in different directions himself, depending on the, who he's talking to. So, um, the, the argument goes that the White House and the Kremlin have reached some kind of uh, agreement on what the outcome should look like in uh, Syria. And basically, it should be that Syria re maintains itself as a cohesive state, although maybe with, um, you know, various levels of autonomy for different groups within different regions, i.e. the Kurds, uh, for instance. And that uh, the so-called various rebel groups, especially ISIS, uh, should be considered... Um, legitimate to uh, go after and remove from the uh, area. That seems to be what people are saying uh, has occurred. And you can find this analysis in Voltaire Net with Terry Mason and but there's some others that say roughly roughly the same thing. Another view is that uh, this isn't the case at all. Uh, another view has uh, the situation uh, escalating out of control to a regional and even may, maybe possibly a world war. I know that sounds quite alarmist and I hate to be alarmist because I've fallen into that trap in the the past that uh, and I'm certain there's much that could happen before it reaches the, that that level. But there are those who claim that that's the way we're headed and that this uh, negotiations, this uh, peace process, this agreement uh, isn't worth the paper that it's written on and that, um, y that things are going to get quite bad and quite quickly. And we see some evidence of this with the uh, recent uh, actions of Turkey, the government of Turkey, uh, firing ar artillery uh, into Syria and uh, certainly it's agreed upon that they were firing at the Syrian Kurds, but some even suggest that they were firing at the uh, Syrian uh, army itself. Um, I think that it's pretty well known that Turkey and Saudi Arabia and maybe a few other countries haven't really accepted the idea that Assad might at least temporarily or maybe even permanently stay as a leader head of the Syrian government and I think they're doing everything to uh, to make it so he can't seems a long shot on their part I don't know how the Russians are gonna react so far the Russians have been very reserved about this latest action and I haven't even been able to find anything oddly enough on the official Maybe it's there somewhere, but it doesn't seem like much has been made on the official TASS Russian news service about this latest incident involving Turkey. It's certainly talked about on 
Russia Today and other outlets and, and throughout the media. It's been, it's been mentioned and talked about, but really nobody is talking about the seriousness of this. I mean, if this were to escalate, it very well could turn into a larger war. And certainly if the U.S. were to directly involve troops, well, that would be, um, well, that would be beyond the pale in some ways, and that would certainly lead to greater hostility and uh, possibly even, even the next world war. Don't know which side is right about this, but I'm hoping the Thierry Masons and the rest who uh, say that uh, there really is an agreement in the works between Russia and the U.S. are right for the sake of everybody. I hope they're, uh, I hope they're right. So we have competing narratives, uh, basically, when it comes to Syria. Meanwhile, in the U.S., the campaign is ongoing and uh, the elections... Uh, are still far enough off, but uh, we can see that um, even though Bernie Sanders wins New Hampshire, he still doesn't get the most delegates because of how the system is mm, <laughs> rigged, I suppose. The, the situation with superdelegates and things. On the Republican side, we have Trump, who uh, seems to be ahead. And... Um, I, I rather believe people who say that the idea was to run Hillary against Trump so Hillary could win because she has such a negative, um, people have a negative view of Hillary generally in the U.S., uh, too many people. I mean, there are people who support her, a hardcore group, certainly, of what you would call, I guess, quote-unquote, liberals. But in general, she's not, uh, she has a bad image in America. And um, so the only way to win would be to run her against somebody who has a worse image. And Trump is like, a, is, he's almost running as a cartoon character or something, it seems like. You know, you just can't, you can't even believe it, much less take it seriously. Nonetheless, we can see that in this country, they tell us the jobs reports and such, which uh, paint things as being good. And the people know that things are not good at all. In fact, things are still very bad. Um, the wages are low by, <clears throat> by the standards of what the wages need to be for people to feel secure. The jobs are, uh, are lacking. There, there are not enough jobs, certainly. And uh, very educated people are finding jobs which they tended to not need an education at all for, or maybe not the education that they got. So we have underemployment, unemployment, and just in general the stagnation and uh, of the wages, which really means less earning power because of inflation and all this sort of thing. And this is really no, nothing new. People want to connect it to 2008. Sure, you can connect it to 2008. That was a factor. And, you know, what happened in the markets in 2008. But really, this is ongoing. This is 40 years of, um, I, I will, would say, class war, basically. With one class just now realizing, just now waking up to, to the fact um, and, you know, you would think something would have to be done just to maintain a level of tranquility in the country. I mean, if there, there must be some of the ruling elite out there that are so rich but yet smart enough to realize that, hey, it's no big deal for us to pay $15 for minimum wage or whatever it is. You know, these things are really not asking a lot uh, in the overall scheme of things. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that is a big deal to them. But it seems to me like... Uh, the way Roosevelt was successful is there were some capitalists who said, okay, it sounds good. It's not going to hurt us in the least. Whereas other capitalists were up in arms about what he was doing. And I think uh, the, this time has come again for a realignment. Or, who knows? I suppose the reason I began making these kind of videos again is because we're at sort of a crossroads domestically, economically, and as a world power. And 
and what will the future of the U.S. be? All right, I've spoken enough.